Now let's nerd out with the toughest exam you've ever taken in your life. So here, we've got a tough exam. You arrive at the tough exam in your life and you have no clue about any of the five questions on the exam. No educated guesses, nothing. So luckily, the exam is multiple choice where each question has only five answers and only one of the five answers is correct. So this is a classic multiple choice exam. Yes. And the first puzzle is some analysis. Using only statistics, no programming, what's the probability of the following events? So, Carly, I think you can help me out with these kind of things. Yeah, problems. my fave. I've taken some exams like this in my day. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the probability of getting all five questions correct? Well, let's see. You said it was a multiple choice exam. Yes, multiple choice exam. And you know nothing. I know nothing. And how many options are there? Five? There are five answers to each question, and only one of them is correct. Okay, so your chance of getting the first one right is one-fifth. Five and options. All right, so one-fifth for the first question, yep. And then one-fifth for the second question, and one-fifth for however many questions they are since... Five questions. Yep, your chance does not change. So one-fifth for each question, so this would be one-fifth to the fifth power, and in Python we can write this as one over five times times, which is raised to the power five. So what decimal do we get here? So we actually end up getting Point zero 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 three two. So that is less than one percent. It's less than one percent. It's basically three point two percent of one percent. So, like, you're basically never going to guess all. That's five not going to happen very often. Yes. So this might be more often. So part B, the probability of you getting all five questions incorrect. Ooh, so that would be basically the opposite chance. So we have. Um, Four-fifths is the probability you're going to get it wrong and then raise to the fifth power. So four-fifths to the fifth power is going to be the, so four-fifths times times five is a probability of you getting them all incorrect. And that is 0 .3277. 0 .3277. Yes. So that is 32.7%. So quite a, quite a bit more likely than, let's see, that was 0.032%. Yes. So way, way, way more likely, like, I don't know, something like one, two, three, uh, a thousand times more likely. <laughs> yeah. So, and then the last question, and this, these analyses will help us as we do the simulation in a second, the probability of you getting at least one question correct. Ooh, so that's one of our special cases. So at least one is complicated. That means we could get one question correct, we could get two or three or four or five correct. So let's go ahead and look at the complement. I can actually do one minus the probability of getting none correct to get my answer, and we already know the probability of getting none correct. Yeah, that was at 32.7%. Yeah. So 1 minus 0 0.3277? 67.3. 67.3% is the probability of getting at least one correct. So that's pretty high. That's over 50%. Yeah, so we're probably going to get something on an exam we don't know anything. Hopefully. So, now we can go ahead and have a simulation of this data that we just did this analysis of. So puzzle two, write a Python function that simulates a single person taking a five question exam, returning the number of questions they answered correctly. So we are going to write a function. So I'm going to say def take exam. And this is a single person taking an exam. So I'm going to define a new function called take exam. And I'm going to simulate a person taking a five question exam. So I'm going to just go ahead and simulate five different values. And there's a lot of different approaches we can take here. So I am going to, um, I want to return the number of questions they answered correctly. So I know you only answer the, the question correctly one out of five times, right? So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to have question one is equal to random dot choice. So I'm going to randomly choose between all the different possible choices. And I'm going to say you're going to get one point if you get it correct and no points if you get it wrong. And in the choice, I know one answer is correct and four answers are wrong. So I have a list that includes the number one and then four copies of the number zero. So it's four times likely for you to choose wrong. This basically corresponds to your A, B, C, D options in the test, mm -hmm. where only one of them is right. And because it's randomly choose one of these values, that's question one. Sounds good. 
And I can either, so I can repeat this code and copy and paste it for question two, three, four, and five, but I'm lazy. I don't want to copy and paste this. So I'm actually going to, I've thought about this for question one, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say this, um, the sum is equal to zero. So the sum of all of the questions I have gotten correctly is equal to zero. And I'll do for i in range five. And now I'll say sum is equal to old value of sum plus random dot choice of one, zero, 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 zero as a list. So now I'm taking, instead of just having Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, I'm just saying the sum is equal to old value of sum plus the next question. And you're doing this five times. Then I'm going to return the sum. And I don't even know, need this Q1 line anymore because I'm not even using it. So basically, I've simulated five random questions because I've summed this up five times. And that's going to return the result of me taking five different questions. So this function is going to return the number of questions I got correct. And now, once I run this, it should run with no errors, but yep. it shouldn't say anything. And That's now let's just got. call take exam by itself and see what happens. Random is not defined. So every time you see random is not defined, this is going to be a classic thing you see a lot when you're working in data science because we don't have the random libraries. So import random will get you there. There we go. And now let's run the take exam function and we get zero. Zero. Oh, the unlikely case. Ooh. So let's see, maybe next time we take this exam we can get one. Take exam one. Yes. Take exam two. Ooh, they got lucky. Take exam one. Zero. And that seems about right. That it's yeah, going to be two. a value zero, one, or two. It's unlikely to get three, four, or five of the questions correct. Yes. So um, we've now have this take exam function that we can use as part of a simulation. So for puzzle three, Right, um, using Python and using the function you wrote in Puzzle 2, simulate taking an exam 100,000 times. So here we just write our classic simulation code. So we start with data is equal to an empty list for i in range 100,000. And then I'm going to say um, correct, which is the number of questions I got correct is not equal to a random number, but it's equal to the function I defined earlier. So if I look up here, I called it take exam. So the correct number of questions I got correct is equal to the result of the take exam function that we wrote earlier. So now we don't even have to think about what's involved in taking the exam. We just do the take exam function. Great. And then we accumulate the correct value. D is equal to curly braces, correcting quotes, colon correct. And then data.append of d, and then uh, df is equal to pd.dataframe of data. So we have written the simulation code again and again and again, and you can see the same patterns used for every single time we run a simulation, no matter if we simulate rolling die, drawing cards, taking an exam, or all the other things we've simulated. Yes, and I made sure to import pandas as PD since we're calling PD, and I ran this, and there are no errors. Awesome. Let's go ahead and just type df to find out what is in our data frame. So we have 100,000 rows with a variable correct, and we have 2, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2. So we've got a lot of different results. And again, as soon as we have a distribution result, I'm really interested in finding out like what's the general overview of those results. So let's do df.plot.hist, open close parentheses, to create a histogram. And it looks like we have a histogram with the highest bar at 1. So we have a histogram, the highest bar is at 1. Second highest bar is at 0. And how, how much percentage is it up there? Um, so Here's what it looks okay. like. Awesome. So we got a 0 bar as well. And, and then we got a bar at 2. And a bar at 3. Yes. And a tiny little bar at 4. And basically nothing at 5. Nothing at 5. So um, using the histogram, um, and compare our answers from puzzle number 1 to our simulation the probability of getting all five answers correct. So we ex expected the probability, based on the statistics you did, 
was way, way, way less than 1%. Less than 1%. And in the histogram, do we even see anything for five? I don't even see a bar at five. So um, we see that it's almost 0% in both. So the probability of getting all five questions incorrect. So what do we see on that? We see that that is um, a non-zero probability. Because what histogram bar are you looking at? For zero. That? Yeah, so we're looking at the zero histogram bar. And it looks like it's maybe around 30 to 40 percent. So the histogram's about 30 to 40 percent of the total area. Yep. Um, do we have y-axis on this? Uh, yes. We do. This is a um, frequency histogram. Frequency. So what's about the frequency of this? Um, it looks like it's about 33. So 33 um, percent or so. Yeah. So that is awesome. So we have 33 percent. We saw the number way up here was 32.7. Perfect. So this is exactly what we expect to see in the histogram. And what's the probability of you getting at least one question correct? At least one question correct is everything else. So that's the bars for one, two, three, four and five, so that's just going to be one minus that 33-ish percent. So it's everything but that zero bar, so that's going to be about, um, I don't know, about 70 percent-ish. Yeah. So we see that the analysis we did in the beginning, just using raw statistics, and then writing a simulation, a somewhat complicated simulation, mm -hmm. and doing the analysis looking at histogram, we get the exact same results. Yeah, so this is a really powerful tool, simulation, because we can kind of check if we did our statistics correctly. And it really lets us think about problems that may be really hard to think about the statistics. If I'm not sure how to do the probability for a particular problem, but I know how to identify the real world scenario, the events that take place that make that probability happen, I can reach to Python and do the programming and do in Python. do a simulation. I love it. So this is the bulk of what we're going to be working on when we think about simulation, is how do we take real world problems and convert them into simulation? And I hope you keep nerding out with simulations.